Let's talk about Kirk Cousins and the Atlanta Falcons because it's a lot of expectations for this team for this upcoming season. When you look at the Atlanta Falcons, a lot of people are saying this should easily be the favorite in the NFC South division for the simple fact that they now have Kirk Cousins at the quarterback spot. This is a team that has a strong defense in place and they also have very good playmakers as well. But Kirk Cousins is not the only thing that is needed for this team to get over the hump. You have a brand new head coach in Raheem Morris and a brand new offensive play calling as well in Zach Robinson. And I do want to start off with the offense. Kirk Cousins in eight games played this season had 18 passing touchdowns to five interceptions. He was one of the top-graded quarterbacks in the NFL at that time. And you may look at the Minnesota Vikings record and say, hey, Kirk Cousins wasn't that effective of a quarterback. The team wasn't that good. The defense early on did not help him out with the Minnesota Vikings this season. And they did not have a run game. The run game was non-existent. You bring them over with the Atlanta Falcons. You have a team that was ninth in rushing offense with B. John Robinson and Ty Algier. And this is what I want to talk about mostly with this offense. Yes, you have Drake London and Kyle Pitts. I'm going to get to those weapons in just a second. This should be a team that prioritizes running the football. Lucky enough for the Atlanta Falcons, you now have an offensive play caller in Zach Robinson that loves to run the football. He comes over from the Sean McVay tree. He was a very good coach with the Los Angeles Rams. He was a quarterback's coach. He was a wide receiving coach. He did a lot of good things with that Rams coaching staff, and he reminds me a lot of Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell is now the head coach with the Minnesota Vikings, and Kirk Cousins had some of his best years in the NFL underneath Kevin O'Connell. This is a system to where they like to run the football to set up the pass game to work into play action. Kirk Cousins is a very good quarterback, but he is coming off a torn Achilles. You do not want him to go out there and throw the football 35 to 40 times in a game. He can do that when need be, but you have a very good rushing attack with Ty Algier and B. John Robinson. B. John Robinson was a first-round pick in last year's draft class. This season, he did not have that explosive season that people were looking for, but a lot of that came down to some fumbles that happened later on in the season and just bad play calling by Arthur Smith. They did not use him in red zone situations until the end of the season. And when I look at a guy like B. John Robinson, he is a generational running back, 976 rushing yards on the season. And that was with 214 carries and four rushing touchdowns. You expect for him to get more carries for his upcoming season. I'm not saying just completely phase out Tyler Algier because just a year ago, he had over a thousand yards rushing. That's why I was very interesting when they selected B. John Robinson in the first round because Tyler Algier is a workhorse running back. You can work both of these guys into the system. B. John Robinson is a more versatile running back than Ty Algier. He can catch the football at the backfield. So expect for this team to work into certain situations to where Ty Algier will be getting some bell cow carries in terms of getting three to four yards at times when they really need him. He can be that power back. B. John Robinson can do that as well. But B. John Robinson can also catch the football at the backfield better than Ty Algier. So expect for them to put B. John Robinson in the slot in certain situations in the red zone and to use Ty Algier as that main running back. And they can split Kyle Pitt out wide and it can have Drake London out wide as well because it makes zero sense over the last couple of years for his team to draft guys like Dr like Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and B. John Robinson and barely use them at all. That is what did Arthur Smith in. It was more than just a bad quarterback play. He did not know how to utilize these guys. And over the last couple of years, they have neglected the quarterback spot and they just have went with playmakers in the last couple of years. It can help Kirk Cousins out long term with this team, but right now he needs to come in. He needs to elevate these guys, guys like Drake London and Kyle Pitts as well. Because even though you have two very good running backs and a solid offensive line, those two weapons should be main priority with this team behind the rushing attack. Like I mentioned before, the run game should come first with this team because of how talented they are in the backfield and how good they are up front with that offensive line with guys like Caleb McGarry and also Jake Matthews and Chris Lindstrom. Chris Lindstrom is one of the best guards in the NFL. A thousand and six snaps played this season. He only allowed three sacks. He's an elite offensive guard. Jake Matthews is older. He allowed five sacks on the season but that was with 1061 snaps played and two of those snaps two of those sacks excuse me came from when Desmond Ritter was holding on to the football for too long so a lot of those pressures that came off his side was because the quarterback was holding on to the football for too long and guys were already open down the field and you also have Caleb McGarry as well four sacks allowed on 847 snaps played so the, the offensive line is very good and I look at the wide receiving options as well Kyle Pitts has not been that star tight end that this team was hoping for. His rookie season, he did have over a 1,000 yards receiving. And you can go back to that rookie season. They used him better. They put him more on the outsides of wide receiver at times. They put him inside and outside the slot. I love that, but Arthur Smith went away from it. He, his sophomore season was very interesting. 
because he missed majority of that season dealing with a PCL injury. And this season that we just got removed from, Jonu Smith did look better. He wasn't that same explosive tight end. He did have some big plays here and there. I look at Kyle Pitts in a make or break situation. He has to go out and show out with this team. I think that he can still be a very good tight end, but this is the quarterback that can get the best out of him. Going back to the then Washington Redskins, Kirk Cousins utilized Jordan Reed in the best way possible. You look at what he just did with the Minnesota Vikings. TJ Hodgson, he helped make him one of the best receiving tight ends in the NFL. So if someone can get the best out of Kyle Pitts, it is going to be Kirk Cousins. And Kyle was joking around saying, hey, if you want my jersey number, I just need more red zone targets. He wasn't lying because they were not giving him the football in the red zone enough. But at the same time, he has to finish his routes. The top of his routes were not finished for the majority of this season. I understand he was coming off that knee injury, but he has to be better. In my opinion, the most important player on this team offensively in that receiving room is not Kyle Pitts. It's Drake London. The last two years have been very good, but Drake London has shown that he can be very consistent and he can easily break over a thousand yards in the season. He had a very good rapport with Desmond Ritter, but Desmond Ritter turned the football over too much. His rookie season was very solid as well, but Marcus Mariota was not a good quarterback with this team. They're not natural passers. You now have a natural passer in Kirk Cousins. With this season, Drake London has 69 catches with 905 receiving yards, two receiving touchdowns. He averaged 13 yards a catch. He had a great game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this season. He had 10 catches for 175 yards. How did they follow that game up? By basically icing them out of the game plan. It was too many times this season where Arthur Smith would have a red-hot Drake London one game, and the next game he'll only get three targets. You cannot have that. Zach Robinson has to go out there and continue to feed these guys. And I understand it's only one football. For some games, Kyle Pitts may only get four to five catches, and Drake London may get eight to nine catches. That's okay. You don't have to force feed these guys. At the same time, get them into the game plan, and that is something that the Atlanta Falcons have been missing over the last three years with this team. So Kirk Cousins has to come in and elevate these guys around him, and these guys also have to step up. But it first starts off with that run game and the play calling from Zach Robinson as well because they're going to have a huge microscope on him. Because the last couple of years, Arthur Smith was not only just a head coach, he was also the main offensive play caller as well. When you look at the other wide receivers on this team, you no longer have Vance Jefferson. They went out there, they made a trade to get Van Jefferson. He was not able to make any noise with this team. And they were hoping that he could come in and be that deep threat. You have Darnell Mooney. Just a couple of years ago, he had over a 1,000 yards receiving. And that's a bit of a catfish stat because he was the only consistent wide receiver with the Chicago Bears so easily he was going to be the number one wide receiver with that team over the last couple of years his numbers have dipped but it wasn't the best situation with Chicago Bears and he struggled with some injuries as well the thing is Darnell Mooney he could take the top off the defense and he's easily going to be the number three option with this team and I'm looking at a guy like Darnell Mooney just go out there run deep down the seams and open up things for guys underneath like Drake London and Kyle Pitts as well. But expect for Darnell Mooney to have a breakout season this year with this team as well. I don't expect for him to be this top wide receiver in the NFL, but I expect for him to have good production. And you also have Rondell Moore as well. Rondell Moore had 40 catches for 352 receiving yards, one receiving touchdown. I'm not as high on Rondell Moore as some people. I think that he's a solid wide receiver. He hasn't been able to break out just yet, but hopefully he can. He's going to be the number four option with this team but I expect for Darnell Mooney to go out there and make a huge impact in terms of getting guys open and just taking some safeties out of the equation so guys like Kyle Pitts and guys like Drake London can eat as well so offensively they should be better on paper they are already better on paper but offensively they should be better all they need is just a consistent quarterback to go out there and feed the football to guys like Drake London and Kyle Pitts and Kirk Cousins is more than just a solid quarterback He's a very good quarterback. He may not be a top five or a top 10 quarterback, but he's very good. And he's given this team something that they have been missing over the last couple of years since this team traded Matt Ryan to go to the Indianapolis Colts with a second round pick. And speaking back on that trade, the Atlanta Falcons definitely won that trade because Matt Ryan was a terrible quarterback with the Indianapolis Colts. One thing that does bother me with the Atlanta Falcons long term would be their defense right now. Their defense was very good this season. They were 11th in total defense, 8th in passing defense. You may ask yourself, okay, why are you worried about them long term? Raheem Morris is now the brand new head coach. He's going to have a huge emphasis on playing defense because he's a former defensive coordinator with the Los Angeles Rams. So he's going to be changing the system just a little bit. You have some solid players with this team. 
As I record this video, they have not re-signed Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree gave this team a lot of good production. He wasn't a double-digit sack guy, but he was able to go out there and put some pressure on guys. And when you look at what Bud Dupree was able to do, was able to go out there and stop the run and give this team good production. But he was not that consistent pass rusher that they were looking for. The Atlanta Falcons need the guy that can go out there and get 10 to 12 sacks like it's no tomorrow. They have not had a consistent pass rusher since Vic Beasley was no longer with this team. He is now in another football league. He's in the USFL. And when you look at Vic Beasley's numbers, the last couple of years when he was with the Atlanta Falcons, he was easily the best pass rusher with this team. Since, since then, it's been a steady decline at that pass rushing spot. This season, the pass rush was up, but it was because of guys like Calais Campbell and because of guys like Bud Dupree. Those are Band-Aid guys. And Grady Jarrett did miss a good portion of the season dealing with the torn ACL. Grady Jarrett just a year ago led this team in sacks, and he was the best pass rusher with this team. You hope that he can come back over and he can still be that star defensive tackle with this team. Like I mentioned before, this team, they have a lot of good defensive players. David Anyamata is also a very good defensive tackle as well, had four sacks on the on the season, two forced fumbles. And you also have Zach Harrison as well. A lot of people have forgotten about Zach Harrison. Only three sacks on the season, but he's 22 years old. Raheem Morris could possibly come in and help develop this kid to easily go out there and get five to eight sacks in the season. They're basically getting pass rushed by committee. The one thing that I struggle with, they're not bringing back those veterans, it seemed like. So you're going to go out there and hopefully draft a guy in the first round, whether it's a Jared Verse or whether it's a liar to lie to from UCLA. But you have to go out there and get a true edge rusher with this team. And the one thing that I do worry about with rookie edge rushers, it may take some time for them to get going in the NFL. But you hope that Raheem Morris can bring that over. The only thing that I'm worried about with this defense is their pass rush. Because they do not have pass rush, it's going to compromise their secondary. And their secondary was strong this season as well. Like I mentioned before, they're eighth in passing defense. You look at A.J. Terrell numbers. He's a bit of a catfish. He's a number one corner, but he struggles against some of those top tier wide receivers in the NFL. 46 catches allowed for 572 receiving yards and four touchdowns allowed as well. But he had eight pass breakups. That's one thing to take note of. But Clark Phillips, the third, is a very good cornerback with the team as well. And half of those numbers on A.J. Terrell are a bit bad as well. And they're a bit miscued because this team, they lost six games by one score. The quarterback play was not putting them in the best situation. If you go back and look at the Arizona Cardinals game, that wasn't all on the defense. It was terrible offensive play down in the stretch against the Minnesota Vikings when they lost that game. Yes, the defense gave up the points, but at the same time, those guys on the field majority of the game, and they had three takeaways in that game. So if just a couple plays bounced back and those guys not turn the football over, whether it was Taylor Heineke or Desmond Ritter, they could have easily been a playoff team. That's what I'm talking about with the Atlanta Falcons. They have the talent. Can they string it together? Now, Raheem Morris was a coach before with the San Bay Buccaneers. It was not the best tenure. You hope that he's learned since then. It's been a long time since the last time he was a head coach, and I trust for him to come in here and fix his defense. But I'm still worried about that pass rushing spot. If they can fix that, they're going to be set to go. But you look at the division that they're in, you can easily say that Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback in this division. Baker Mayfield will like to have a conversation about that, but Baker Mayfield just came off one strong year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Kirk Cousins is a proven veteran in the NFL. And like I mentioned before, there is a cause of concern. You gave Kirk Cousins a lot of money, but he's coming off a of torn Achilles as well. And I don't expect for him to touch that quarterback position in the NFL draft because you gave Kirk Cousins so much money. I trust the offensive line to go out there and protect Kirk Cousins. He has never been the guy to run around like a Justin Fields or a Marcus Mariota or even a Lamar Jackson, but he's going to go out there Go through his progressions and dish the ball out. I think that this is a perfect fit with the Atlanta Falcons. He can help elevate these guys around him. And it's put up or shut up right now. It seems like Kirk Cousins is coming over to be the main savior with this team. But it's also coming down from the coaching staff as well. And Jesse Bates was the best defensive player with this team this season. He's easily one of the best pickups this team has had in the last couple of years. But let me know in the comment section below. How do you guys feel about the Atlanta Falcons? And right now, are they a playoff caliber team? I would say yes. The New Orleans Saints are one of those teams that, that could be a thorn in your side, but at the same time, the Saints are getting older. They're not the same team, and Derek Carr seems like he's falling off right now. The Carolina Panthers, they're still in a rebuild type of situation. They're trying to figure out their defense altogether. They're trying to see if Bryce Young is their guy or not. And then you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. To me, that would be the toughest team to beat. But at the same time, the Atlanta Falcons beat this team this season when Desmond Ritter had three fumbles in a game. 
So if you can go out there and you can beat that team and Desmond Ritter had three fumbles in the game, which were lost, and they gave the Tampa Bay Buccaneers extra possessions, you can easily go out there and beat a team like that if Kirk Cousins can take care of the football and give you good enough offensive production. But like I mentioned before, it comes down to the coaching and the players as a whole. Let me know in the comment section below how you guys feel about the Atlanta Falcons. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, when each and every last win, guys, stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless.